I listen to a couple of podcasts where uh, basically they're in like different parts of the world over like Skype. And mm-hmm. they'll, because there's like actually a pretty significant delay over Skype, they'll try and like sing an intro song together or whatever. <laughs> and it just sounds atrocious because it, it isn't synced. They didn't sync up at all. Yeah. <laughs> and they're trying to sing out of sync and then they try and sync with each other and it just sounds like a, a mess. Oh, no. It's pretty funny. That is pretty funny. I suppose if we're starved for content later on, we can try that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if we end up literally just like trying to entertain. All right, Octree. Tell me a little about uh, a bit about yourself. Um, so my name's Jason. I live in Canada. Um, recently been obsessed with voxels. Um, yeah, I'm a video game programmer by day, uh, a voxel artist by night. <laughs> and by train. By train, yeah. Do you mean, do you mean literally by train? Yeah, don't you do most of your, uh, you used to do most of your uh, models uh, in transit? Yes. On your uh, tablet? Yes, almost exclusively. Yeah, that's right. Which was most impressive to me, because I was like, what? <laughs> you make this whole ship on the bus ride? Are you kidding me? Yeah, yeah. I have anyway. a 45-minute train ride, and uh, I know how to voxel on a trackpad, and it feels very strange to use a mouse. Really? Yeah. I don't think I knew that. I thought you were using a, a stylus, I think. Yeah, uh, I had a stylus, but uh, Magic Voxel kind of doesn't really support it properly. It's it, it ends up being easier to kind of just use a trackpad. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. I have also used a trackpad um, on like a laptop, and I guess it wasn't so bad. It could definitely have been worse, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, when did you discover voxel art? Uh, so I had to look back at my first Instagram post, which was in January 2018. So that's almost like two years now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, was it uh, from a particular source or was it actually Magic of Voxel Art? It was Magic of Voxel. I guess um, my first couple of attempts were sort of just like to learn the software. So uh kind of wanted to see what the renderer was capable of. But they're pretty minimal, and I guess, I guess the rest of my pieces have been pretty minimal from then on too. But yeah, gloriously so. <laughs> You're pretty much known for being the master of minimal. Yeah. Uh, models yeah. here in the MVC. I I like the aesthetic of. Like, Me uh, too. You have to use your imagination a little bit sometimes. It also seems more challenging, doesn't it, to make a. Uh, a low voxel model still include all the details you want it is it's to me i i like that it's kind of like a puzzle like uh i i have a lot of like strict guidelines that i that i like to follow uh and so try like when you start out and trying to figure out what what resolution or or how how many voxels you're going to use uh it's a challenge and then trying to get the right shape without um, like cheating. I, I don't know. I, I, I know, I, I guess my <laughs> origins were like, I, I developed an interest in pixel art and I know there's like some kind of fundamental rules to pixel art that you're supposed to follow when it comes to uh, like straight lines and stuff like that. So I guess that transferred over. Yeah. Um, that's actually one of the things that I really like about voxel art is that it's 3D pixel art. Because pixel art is so satisfying for some reason, and that's probably because of like the games we all grew up with. But um, that sort of limitation is really cool when someone can still crank out a uh, like a painting or uh, even a voxel model that is clearly a thing that it's supposed to be, but done with such a low resolution. I guess. Yeah, like I, I started out. I guess I, I saw some really interesting pixel art and I was trying to learn how to make pixel art and I, I was using Photoshop and it wasn't, it wasn't going so well for me. I wasn't really happy with uh, the process. And I think just uh, digging through YouTube videos, going down a wormhole, I started to find more and more voxel art. And uh, I kept seeing this one program 
and was like, okay, maybe maybe I should uh, pivot. Yeah, yeah. Um, speaking of the program itself, uh, when did you start using Magic of Voxel? Like very shortly after you, um, um, I guess, found those posts? Yeah, I guess it was so easy to get into because you just download it. There's no... I don't know. I feel like the the barrier of entry was very low, and uh, that's true. I put it. I had it on my Microsoft Surface at the time, and uh, I think I kind of just like sat on the couch and pumped something out. You know, you you can make something in a minute if you want, mm-hmm. and uh, there's not anything that prevents you from doing that. It's sort of. I, I feel like anyone could Place do a it. Place a voxel here and give it yeah. another. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. um did you have any experience with other 3d editors or anything like that to um i did yeah like maybe uh... um i guess my my background is in um uh information technology i guess uh, i went to school for interactive multimedia and design Ooh, so okay. uh i sort of have a like the one thing that that taught me was how to like learn uh software applications and code like mm-hmm. it didn't didn't uh master any of them but uh it taught me how to learn them quickly and effectively so i guess i had a leg up there yeah like a jump start that's good and um like you said the the entry to magic of voxel being as easy as it is it kind of does most of the hard stuff for you in terms of modeling and then um you know gives you pre-rendered like or not pre-rendered but pre-built cubes so you don't have to mess with polygonal shapes or anything yeah it's it's... i I think um one thing that i've learned uh or experienced from um making uh electronic music is if you're using an electronic instrument there's always um sort of restrictions or uh like you have to work within the rules of that limited device and I think that's like a good thing. Like sometimes you wish you had all the freedom to do everything and anything, but when you're like, when you have to work within the rules of the program and you have a limitation that you can only use squares, for example, or cubes, <laughs> uh, right. I think that's like part of the creative process is like overcoming those, you know? Yeah, trying to figure out how to make something with little yeah yeah um cool so we've covered that you have a background in design and programming which is sort of like a help jump start there uh when did you find the um it wasn't called mvc at the time but the uh as it's known now the discord server yeah i don't know um i'm trying to remember back to when i joined or or how i found it uh I have no idea. I think I think I literally just uh, went on Discord and searched Voxel. <laughs> mm-hmm. I don't think that there yeah. was much of a presence for Magic of Voxel France at the time. I mean, I'm sure there was, but I didn't. I don't think I found it that way. Uh, did you find that it was helpful to your development in uh, Magic of Voxel? Well, Whoa, that was really bad. <laughs> I think it certainly has exposed me to. Uh, some of the like bigger artists like i was really only looking at instagram uh Mm -hmm. and i'd kind of seen a couple of pictures from other people but now i actively follow like a a lot of the community and i think it's mostly more like um it's kept me going Mm -hmm. uh like there's times when I get busy or like life gets in the way and like you spend a long time away from it, but being attached to the community is definitely like a good way to keep you motivated to keep making them. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, kind of like to learn from other artists too. I love seeing what everybody's up to like all the time. Yeah. It's always good when you're like, if I'm watching someone stream now, or I see someone's done something in a piece and I can just reach out to them and be like, Hey, is, how did you do that? Or how do you do this one thing? Yeah. Um, that's the coolest thing about discord for me. Yeah. The, like people will just interact with you and mm-hmm. even just 
like the these artists that you would just think are like completely in another world you can just reach out and talk to them now which is pretty cool Mm -hmm. that was the biggest thing for me i'm like whoa i was starstruck (laughs) yeah 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 saw some of the posts in the discord server i was like whoa i'm not i'm not about to post my little four voxel model this is not this is not good for me (laughs) yeah yeah i think uh, it's a good motivation too though when when you can kind of it is uh, yeah like mingle because this is sort of like um I don't know, this is, it's not new because we've had like forums and chat rooms for years and years, but like, I think the accessibility for like content, um, I don't know, like production and just showing what you can do, how easy it is to post like a picture in discord and then have reactions and stuff to it and arrange. It's like feedback on art now can be instantaneous, which is kind of like a a blessing and a curse sometimes because it's like, oh man, did I... I do something good or is the community going to tear it apart when I post it <laughs> and tell me all about how terrible it is yeah but yeah. usually that's not the case everybody's really amicable and very friendly about um, everybody's art and I noticed that most people are willing to help uh, especially like new users and everything figure out how to use the program or answer frequently ask questions and stuff like that yeah for sure if, if somebody's new and they're they're willing to learn it's mm-hmm. it's pretty easy to like have a community of people who are willing to answer questions and stuff. Yeah. Did you ever have like a presence on uh, DeviantArt or any of those older sites? <laughs> I did, but uh, not nothing worthwhile, really. <laughs> like I, I've I dabbled in a couple of artistic ventures that I'm probably more of a programmer than anything, but I feel like mm-hmm. like voxel art's the first thing i can kind of be proud of that i've been doing consistently oh okay aside from maybe like my music i think i think that's a different one other thing yeah and uh you said you make electronic music um do you also produce music for uh for programming reasons like for any projects that you're working on or is that like a hobby i mean that would that would be the dream uh a lot, a lot of people tell me my music sounds like it's part of a video game which is Ooh. like not not intentional but I do just make it for fun. I, I make it for myself. Um, there's something really satisfying about just making something for entertainment. Yeah, especially music. Love music. Yeah. Um, so, if I guess um, utopian re- ideal situation for you, you could be a uh, either a programmer or a sound designer. Would you want to do one or the other, or do them both combine into? A, whole projects like make your own video game for example do all the music yourself yeah i mean hopefully one day that happens but uh i don't think i have the skills to be a a sound designer Uh, (laughs) i have the (laughs) equipment to do it but i I don't know okay all things in time we'll get you there yeah yeah it's more of a hobby um and you said it's all electronic right do you play any instruments or anything um i mean i'm classically trained in piano um i like to pretend i can play guitar but (laughs) i can't really well the um classical training in piano is impressive enough i I can't really play piano i would love to play yeah i I can't really play anymore either i I, that takes a lot of practice but um (laughs) i can make up stupid songs and stuff so yeah you just use like uh samples and stuff like that well what what software do you use to make your music uh i use ableton and i have a um, electric grand piano and uh i mainly use um uh ableton push which is sort of like a black box controller thing so that i don't have to use a keyboard and mouse oh gotcha gotcha oh that sounds nice actually it's a solution i've been looking for yeah interesting um so what about uh new people coming into like voxel art uh, and there's like tons of resources now and most of them we've got like a pretty good compilation of them in uh, the mvc for ourselves. but there's also like most voxel artists have like twitter and instagram profiles now behance uh art station for example and uh, they're sort of getting found and discovered when did you start um making like posts about your art like uh, elsewhere besides I guess just the Discord server. 
Yeah, I think uh, I probably joined the Discord server shortly after I started posting on Instagram. Uh, I think like I had this idea in my head. Uh, my my account actually was used for just like really stupid found art that I would just like t felt like taking a picture of. Um, <laughs> and I think I decided uh, shortly after getting into voxel art that I would just delete all that stuff. And kind of have this like new, uh, what do you, like you know that like profile gallery type thing. So I'm really I'm really like uh, uptight about the like vision of that and everything kind of like going together for some reason. I don't know why. So I, I think that's part of the reason I want to like migrate all that stuff over to Twitter as well because uh, you don't like with Twitter it's a little bit more free form I guess you don't have to have this like. Uh, like perfect gallery of everything you can just post stuff one off right right because there's, there's a lot of stuff Without that i'd the, like uh... to be sharing but i don't want to put it on my gallery or whatever it's really <laughs> stupid so, um... you're right about that though it's it's sort of like a um like a curated thing yeah you it's kind curated. Of have to, like manage your yeah so that it looks right and uh yeah i do uh i see that uh, from time to time and i do appreciate like everything with Twitter, but I uh, I need to get better about that. <laughs> I always forget that my Twitter account exists, and it's so easy to post to Instagram, for example. Yeah, I'm on so this I'm like, mission uh... to slowly migrate everything over to Twitter, so that I'm yeah. up to date, and then I can start just posting to Instagram and automatically sending it to Twitter. Um, mm -hmm. I'm almost there. I think I'm about halfway there. Oh, nice. Yeah. If I if I keep doing it once a week like like I have been, <laughs> it should be there. But, Do you uh, find that um, people are still receptive of your art on Twitter? I don't know. I I don't have the same attachment to Twitter as I do Instagram. Um, I I find that I will open up Instagram and uh, my whole feed is uh, only for uh, voxel and pixel art and and a little bit of three D printing. So, mm -hmm. and then with Twitter, I find that there, there's, there's much more content coming out and, and a lot of more artists are on Twitter, but yeah. I, it doesn't, I don't gravitate towards it. I, I don't open it up that often. Nor do I. We'll have to get better about that. Yeah. But that's okay. Um, let's talk about, uh, Magic of Voxel itself. Uh, right now it seems to be like the premiere, if I can say that, Voxel Editor. And there are a few out, including uh, mobile apps and stuff like that, too. Yeah. But would you say that Magic of Voxel is uh, special or in any way different uh, from the other editors that you've used or seen? It is. Uh, it really is. Like, I think I've used just about all of them uh, in some capacity or another. Uh, and while some of them have their own strengths, uh, something about, I mean, okay, the biggest thing is like Magic of Oxel's render is better than a lot of renderers out there and just, a, <laughs> just the speed and the, the ease of use there. But I think it's actually the editor that's what makes it special for people to actually create voxels. You know what I mean? Like, uh, just the simple hotkeys and the, the way that you can make voxels and and the camera controls and whatnot uh mm. is just way better than anything else out there and and free yeah <laughs> like, which is crazy <laughs> like I've, I've paid for some of the other ones um and they're it i wouldn't want to make voxels in them and you certainly mm. couldn't render the voxels i think that's what makes it so powerful yeah to have the editor and the renderer in there so strong yeah. And like you said, really user friendly, which is awesome. It's it's They're... self contained. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, without an installation or anything. Like this whole application is just sort of doing it in its own container. It's awesome. Yeah. Um uh you can also pretty freely export your models in pretty much any file type you want to move them into a like another editor. Yeah. Or something like that if That's, you need to do so. Now that uh I'm using voxels for more game development stuff, I think that is maybe the one weakness of Magic of Voxel is uh you can export to a bunch of different things. 
but it's not really optimized for uh, game assets. So for me, for me, the only thing that's keeping me from using Magicka exclusively is um, the optimized exporting for games. What um, what would you need? Like, what would you improve about it? Well, right now you can you can export it to Cubicle, and Cubicle can export as a a um, manifold mesh. So what happens is like it exports your palette in Magicka, and then just makes geometry for each color mm. instead of just okay. making the geometry for like. Um, the entire object without color and then texturing like texturing it on top gotcha and um that's problematic i imagine uh magic could do that but mm -hmm. so be it well with the uh future updates in terms of like the last i think two updates that magica has gotten they've been pretty good updates and um if tracy is paying attention to what we're doing and what we're saying which is cool yeah yeah um yeah i know it's a lot to uh to you know develop this on his own as i imagine he is um so like any features are great <laughs> you know what i mean like I've, I've been really happy with what we've gotten so far and, and i'm not like a developer myself so it's fantastic for art like just to step into magica and like make a model and render it and make it look all pretty no problem don't actually need any you know external stuff for that but it would be good, and I think it'd probably be best for the like the software's career in total to sort of make it more user friendly for that exporting for developers use and everything, and maybe even to re include uh, like an animation timeline or like a rigging tool. Yeah, I don't, I'm not sure about the rigging part of it. I mean, I think um, like when we get these new features. Uh, we have had some quality of life features lately um, with the color palette and whatnot, but I think a lot of it goes towards the render. I think that's probably where oh, definitely. Uh, F. Tressy's uh, interests are, and I'm happy to see any render improvements. Like That's always welcome. Um, but when it comes to rigging, I think, uh, like I, I think today somebody asked about um, some feature that would be good. Uh, oh, like texturing, texturing a model, and I'm oh, like, yeah, I did I'm see like, that. well, but there's other programs that can do that better. That's true. You don't really need you to know? apply a, like, a I don't texture want... to the models in Magicka. Or like rigging and animating. Uh, mm -hmm. To me, that's outside of what Magicka Voxel would excel at. Hmm, I see. I see. Um, I could totally get down with that. Like maybe maybe some simple keyframe animation, but but to me, that's like you could do that with something else better. Hmm. And this has pretty much proven to be the case. Um, and it's not too big of a hang-up right now either, because uh, other applications don't take forever to like set up and run for such a simple project anymore. I mean, we're making turntable GIFs and everything of our models all the time and barely taking too much effort to do so. Yeah, the turntables but, are um, nice. And we did have the, the uh, keyframe animations at one point, right? Yeah, but there's got to be a reason like a, he took it out, right? Like, yeah, yeah, got to be. Um, I think it'd be nice to have like just, you know, nothing more complex than that. Just like, uh, even if there was a frame limit, you know what I mean? If you wanted to just do, I don't know, a character walking across a room or something like that, you could make something very simple. Yeah, I, I like that it necessary. would stay like simple. I think it's probably just a feature that's like a black hole of people requesting more and more features. <laughs> oh, you know yeah, what I mean? I think I agree with that actually. So maybe that's why he took it out. A lot of people were just asking for more and more to do with that. Mm, to make it a full animation tool and stuff, huh? Yeah. I mean, I think it would be cool to have an animation set up there that was only for moving voxels on the matrix. Like people mm -hmm. probably want to see features that, um, you would use in other in other animation programs like rigging and uh, like scaling and and rotating and stuff. But I like that mm -hmm. Magic of Voxel never strays from that grid. Gotcha. You know what I mean? So there is there's a lot of merit to that um, contained utility 
basically. It does what it does very well. Yeah, like even in Cubicle, you can you can move your voxels half a voxel in position. Oh. And I'm to me I'm like that's that ain't right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, or like being There's able to rotate like something a... like I don't know. I could see how you might want a character to have rotations. Mm -hmm. but then just use a program that excels at that. Gotcha. So Magic of Voxel, best for being a rendering and modeling tool. Yeah. Best for art, conceptualization, stuff like that. You can export if you need. Um, you you can I've export it just a... to another program that'll let you do what you need to do. Yeah, exactly. And uh, there are like pretty straightforward rigging tools and stuff like that. Hell, I mean, you can... Just export to Blender, I suppose, and do whatever you need to in there. Yeah, it's funny how even even Blender, which I think is seen as kind of a user-friendly, easy learning curve, <laughs> it doesn't have anything on Magicka. Like, I feel like you could give Magicka to a six-year-old, maybe. Oh, yeah. Maybe. I mean, I gave it to a ten-year-old, and he made something. Yeah. I'd like to. I'd like to see that actually. Oh, like <laughs> have some kids like thrown into the gauntlet of Magic of Voxel. <laughs> the gauntlet, yeah. Well, we do user testing at work because um, I mean, like ten-year-olds are kind of in our our age range, so mm. it would be kind of interesting to give them the tool that we use and see what they yeah, can do really. with it. I don't know. Or maybe to see how it could be optimized so that they could better use it to make it even more user-friendly maybe possibly yeah i mean i recently um our, our art director started using it and um Ooh. just seeing him use it for the first time without any instruction was kind of interesting mm -hmm. like, did he figure it out kind of quick oh yeah yeah he's he's like amazing at it um oh. it's just it's just funny to see how people use programs differently, you know? Yeah, totally. Yeah. I actually um, <laughs> I showed uh, some of my ignorance when I streamed myself doing voxel art for the first time. Yeah, And people yeah. were like, uh, why don't you do this? You know, the, the hotkey is this. You know, you don't have to actually go through all that work. <laughs> I know. And I'm like, oh, wow, you're right. Okay. It's good, though. It's good. Oh yeah, that, I mean, like some super people fast tracks the learning. Some people just like like I, I might struggle to do like to change my ways. Kind of got something that works for me, but I watch mm -hmm. other people stream in Magicka, and it's like, whoa! How do, how are you even like moving the camera like that and stuff? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, maybe that's a, a symptom of using the trackpad. Mm, okay, but. Uh, like some people like free form fly the camera around like they're in VR or something. It's crazy. Yeah, I know, right? I was watching that too just the other day. And uh, I was like, I'm pretty sure I know how to do this. But I'm not super sure that I know how to do this. And I opened it up. And I know that there are keys involved with, you know, like moving the camera around, which is nice. Yeah, yeah. I just feel like with my left hand, I'm always hitting a hot key for the brush or something like that. And I'm like, uh, I'll just move around. With the mouse, I guess. Yeah, for me, I'll just press uh, four, and then yeah, uh, like I use like an orthographic camera, and I <laughs> <laughs> like it's kind of sad, probably, to other people. I mean, that's pretty much what I do too. I, I like to reorient because like Magic of Voxel was actually my first like um, true three D editor learning experience. I started kind of like teaching myself blender a little bit but magic of voxel was like oh, okay here i'm gonna learn how to do this and just to figure out how to navigate the camera in an editor in 3d space around a 3d object um well basically i think it's just a good thing that i played so many video games because yeah that's true, that's true. <laughs> see i have a lot a lot of experience like using different uh 3d editors so mm -hmm. that kind of came that was like second nature to me but it is interesting yeah, that uh, it's one of the few programs that's probably um, easy to use without a mouse. Like most programs, kind of require you to have the, like at least a middle click, mm -hmm. um, or 
you know, it, it has all the tools you need to make voxels. Like the camera controls are key for that. Absolutely. <sighs> all right. So how about um, like recommendations for new artists? If people were freshly interested in not even necessarily you know, voxel modeling, but that is what I'm trying to get across here. Um, do you think that um, it would be more beneficial to learn from like one specific source that you know about, for example, I guess about voxel art, or to uh, to like join the Discord server, be on the subreddit, for example, and um, try to learn it inside the community as opposed to like developing their own skills? Yeah, I think um, the first thing I would do is like watch people use it. I mean, mm -hmm. if you're if you're just getting started and uh, you don't have a lot of experience uh, with software like this, watching other people do it and watching other people talk about it is really good. And then mm -hmm. anything you can't figure out on your own or haven't seen someone else do, like get on Discord and ask somebody mm -hmm. because guaranteed there's somebody out there who knows how to do it the best way possible, right? That's true. Don't be afraid to ask, basically. Yeah. That was my major hang-up. I'm like, uh, do I really want to ask this noob question to these masterful voxel artists that are making models I can't even conceive of? Yeah, I guess there's a, the there's like a level. Is yes. Yeah, yeah, you should. It's like, if you can't figure it out on your own, it's probably not that stupid of a question. Or, I yeah. mean, maybe there's an easy answer to it, but... If it's if it's something yeah, you want to be able to do, mm -hmm. ask whoever knows basically, and uh, I mean, we we've sort of got the wiki for Magic of Voxel, which has been in progress for a while, and uh, there are some YouTube tutorials and there's some like uh, web pages that some of our own users have designed now, to um, well actually they designed back then before like I don't know like two years ago or so before most of this stuff and our resources were collected and stuff. Um, but now we've got like greater resources, I suppose. Like if you Google like how to voxel art, you'll probably come across, I don't know, probably Gato Stau's uh, page that he put together with like that huge wealth of, um, resources, like, um, specific artists, like, uh, gallery pages, some tutorials that are even in different languages, actually. Yeah. Yeah. I saw that. It's crazy. <clears throat> And uh, lots of examples and, you know, stuff like that. So, the resources are there. And uh, I think a Google search could probably take you where you need to be, but it's, I, I kind of can't get away from, like, it's just so beneficial to, uh, like, immerse yourself with other artists and creators and developers and stuff and ask questions and participate and stuff like that and really kind of work on the craft together as a community. Yeah, I think participation is a key. I mean, you don't have to join a community just to learn like, mm -hmm. or ask questions. Um, I think participating and getting feedback from people is always really good. Like, don't work in a Super silo. Super good, yeah. Mm -hmm. You're right. And uh, we were talking about social media earlier, the presence for like uh, voxel art and stuff like that on, on Twitter and Instagram is pretty good. You, you'll find thousands of results if you run a search. Yeah, that's and, true. And um, most of them are, like, linking to each other and stuff. Uh, what's that one account on, on Instagram? Megavoxels or whatever that's always uh, reposting, you know, or featuring, rather, uh, other artists and stuff like that. Uh, increases their exposure. So people who have no idea about 3D modeling at all are, like, seeing basically, like, voxel models of video games that they like. And... Um, they're like, oh yeah, I like that. You know what I mean? They've, uh, like you were talking about earlier, I've seen some three D printing being done because uh, people are starting to figure out how to do that also. Yeah, it's, and, it's uh, becoming a big thing. Yeah, like, and I think that's a good thing because um, voxel modeling being like three D modeling light or the most approachable, you know, version of it. I think uh, it would be a great tool to like everybody could try i think it'd be beneficial for kids to learn how to use it and learn the concepts of 3d modeling and stuff and hopefully eventually move on beyond that yeah because um it's there's just so much behind it i guess yeah i love it
So that is great. Uh, what do you think about like the future of voxel art? Do you think um, uh, we're seeing a lot of like video games come out, like indie style and everything that are uh, have that voxel aesthetic, and uh, they're trying to like do 2.5D. Also, there was like Octopath Traveler came out on the Switch. That was a huge deal. Um, is it more convenient? Do you think? for developers to do like a voxel art style in their games? Does it like uh, help to expedite their process so that they can actually do a product faster? It definitely does. I think um, if you do it right, um, it can be a really good style. Um, it's not for every game probably, but mm -hmm. uh, I mean, being in the process of uh, starting up a voxel based mobile game uh, I can definitely say that it is like kickstarted our creativity. Our our original plan was to just go with uh, pre-made asset packs and sort of see how far we can get using those. And I think it kind of pigeonholed our creativity because uh, we only had what we could find. Yeah. And now that we've got kind of up and running with voxel art, it's so fast to make something make a final asset or make a placeholder asset and uh, up the resolution later. Um, and some of the benefits, I mean, getting into the nitty gritty of it, like if you're making a, a mobile game, optimization is like huge. It's everything. And voxel mm, art yeah. can be really optimized if you do it right. Um, so that's pretty exciting, at least for us to see that. Cool, cool. And um, to see like, the variety also that people are introducing like voxels into like a physics engine for example we saw that one game not too long ago that i think blue drake featured on his, his channel with uh the destructive environment that just looked really good oh, like all yeah. the voxels interacted like super cleanly <laughs> yeah i can't and the imagine the environment was sort of like yeah so that's that's pretty cool yeah i'm hoping and, um, there's like, definitely there's um i saw this this week i think i can't remember the name of the company uh working on micro voxel uh like 3d modeling engine i guess i, I don't actually know i should do some research oh, wow. on that but basically the like voxel. the voxels get so small that it just looks like 3d modeling in a sense oh wow okay and they just raised a ton of money uh to create that so maybe in the near future we'll have uh voxels voxels so small that they make up everything and you don't even know it So, this idea for the uh, MVC Voxcast, you know, podcast, being part of the Vox Spot, you know, actual named YouTube channel, um, is pretty much completely designed to benefit the community and uh, to bring more artists together, uh, promote more collaborations and stuff, and also to help people learn uh, and develop as artists and with the Magicka uh, application in particular to get better with it so we can do tutorial videos and interviews like these with other artists and uh, kind of get more perspective on things as things go forward and uh, we can also follow uh, updates to Magicka so that any content that's added to it or new features or anything we cover it and uh, make sure everybody knows how to use it um, and also provide resources or directions to those resources to uh, figure out like how to be a better artist or how to use the program better in any other way that may not work as well for you as um or that may work better for you than just listening to someone talk about it <laughs> um, yeah i, I think I it's a good I'm idea a... I, I think our the idea has like solidified where uh like the magic of voxel community is exactly that it's just like our discord community and uh we have some like automation in place to sort of have a bit of a, a social media presence um True. and uh, clearly the voxbot uh server is now defunct um but we can kind of like uh phoenix out of the ashes kind of turn it into this like <laughs> account like a like a social account voxbot yeah, and exactly. the voxbot runs the voxcast which is just episodes of a podcast but it's also yep. more than that. It's like the Voxbot is uh, a resource and a, and a like account basically that to promote the community. We and can promote whatnot. artists and 
education basically and it should be like the go-to spot for uh learning or um i guess uh expansive expansive awareness on the community it's it's the the hype always... man for the for <laughs> the i don't know whatever hype men hype <laughs> voxels in this case man Good yeah, voxel yeah. art the, the voxel so, yeah. rap group uh well that's a thing now we'll work on that later i suppose <laughs>